there have been several journalists and news stations who have been writing about the coronavirus and the brain. Here's an article from the New York Times that discusses patients with the coronavirus showing symptoms of the brain. Another article from Fox 35 talks about how researchers think that the coronavirus could affect multiple organs, including the heart, the lungs, and the brain. The article from USA Today not only discusses how the coronavirus causes brain damage, but takes it one step further and says it also causes inability to walk. And when we read these articles, we get scared and nervous because we don't know what this virus is capable of doing. And some people take it to the extreme and believe that this virus can eat our brain and lead to the zombie apocalypse because there are people who are posting these kind of memes and videos on the coronavirus. So I'm here to answer the question that all of these news articles are talking about. Does the coronavirus, in fact, affect our brain? My name is Dr. Esiosa Egidaro, and I'm currently a neurologist and a neuroscientist at the Mayo Clinic. My expertise means that I have a lot of experience in studying the brain, in medicine, and in science. Dr. Erica Lujan also worked with me on reading through these articles. She's a neurophysiologist in Texas. So what do these articles show? Are these headlines even true? Does the coronavirus damage our brain? Where do these headlines come from? These articles are getting their sources from three main papers. The first paper discusses a 74-year-old male who tested positive for the coronavirus. He came into the hospital with fever and cough, and he also had a headache. And as the virus progressed, he started having confusion, not being able to speak or follow commands, and ended up in the ICU. Another source comes from a case report describing a 58-year-old female who presented to the hospital with cough and fevers, and she also had some confusion, decreased ability to move her arms and her legs. She tested positive for COVID, and because of the severity of her illness, she also had to go to the ICU as well. The third source comes from a study that was conducted in China. What these scientists did is they looked at over 200 people who tested positive for the virus and looked and see in their medical record to see what kind of symptoms that they have that dealt with the brain. And they found that individuals who had very severe coronavirus infection also had headaches, dizziness, decreased taste, and loss of smell. Does the coronavirus cause brain damage? No, not in the way that mad cow disease or Alzheimer's disease causes brain damage. So if it doesn't cause brain damage, then what is really going on? Here's what's going on. When the virus enters our body, there are many outcomes of this virus. There are some people who have no symptoms. We call them asymptomatic carriers. There are some people who have symptoms like fevers and coughing that mainly affects their lungs. There are others who unfortunately will get really sick from this virus. The virus will go affect their lungs and then cause an overwhelming response that we term sepsis and that leads to multiple organs failing. In the latter state, when the virus makes someone extremely sick, that's when other organs start to shut down like our liver, our kidneys, and even our brain. And when your brain starts to shut down, then you have these symptoms of not being able to follow commands, um, decreased sensation, n not being able to interact with the people around you, and sometimes even coma. So this is not a flesh-eating virus. This is not going to lead to the zombie apocalypse, but it can make us very, very sick. So ways to protect yourself are social distancing, safe hygiene, and 
being mindful of those who are around you who may be having symptoms. And I continue to encourage everyone to check the sources that they're reading, check the sources that they're getting information from. And the most reliable source is the Center for Disease Control.gov. If you have any further questions or want some more information, comment below and I will try to address your questions. For those who want more information on these three main sources, we're gonna be posting additional videos that provide a more in-depth analysis on these studies. Thank you, stay safe.